A couple of more basic concepts related to compounds is this idea of percent elemental composition. And I know it sounds daunting, but usually students really pick up on it. And then the other thing is if you have a compound, we can go ahead and reduce a molecular formula to its empirical formula given the compound. So first let's start with percent elemental composition. All that means is that if you have, for instance, water, and of course the formula for water is H2O, you might want to know what, if you, um, of water, what weight percent is hydrogen and what weight percent is oxygen. Okay, so that's kind of what we're after, and the problems aren't too hard to work. So, um, all right, so let's see what they look like. So, for instance, we could knock out a percent elemental composition for acetone, which has three carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen in one molecule of acetone. So we need to come up with what weight percent is hydrogen, what weight percent is carbon, and what weight percent is oxygen. There's a few ways to kind of look at this, but if we kind of uh, consider the molar mass for the entire compound. We talked about getting molar masses, and this is the abbreviated way to get the molar mass. Where remember, the first term it represents the carbon. There are three carbons, and this is the decimal number for carbon. There are six hydrogens, and this is the decimal number for hydrogen. There is one oxygen, and this is the decimal number for oxygen. So the molar mass for the compound is 58.08 grams per mole. And we basically need to divvy that out into carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So based upon one mole then, if you have one mole, then you have a total of 58.08 grams of acetone. Does that make sense? If you have one mole and the molar mass is 58.08 grams per one mole, then you have, on this basis, 58.08 grams of acetone. So we just need to come up with how much of that mass is carbon, how much of that mass is hydrogen, how much of that mass is oxygen. So the carbon, hopefully you recognize that we, the mass for carbon is depends on how many carbons there are and its decimal number. So what, 36.03 grams of that 58.08 grams of acetone will be carbon. Hope that works for you. It, doing them kind of, it, I like these problems. <laughs> for hydrogen, there are six hydrogens and they each weigh 1.008 grams if this is on one mole basis of acetone. So that's the total mass of, of hydrogen. The total mass of oxygen, of course, since there's only one, will be 16.00 grams. So now if these are the total masses, remember when we did the, the egg where you, did, you came up with weight percent of shell, weight percent of the white, weight percent of the yolk. What you did was to take the mass of each component divided by the total mass. Mass of the component divided by the total mass. Mass of the component divided by the total mass. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So the weight percent or mass percent of carbon looks like this. Where we take 3 times 12.01, that'll be us grams of carbon, divided by the total mass of acetone on this one mole basis. Okay, so now to get it to weight percent, we're going to multiply by 100 or 100 percent we're going to round to four significant figures, and we get the weight percent of carbon is 62.04%. Do a similar thing for hydrogen. 6 times 1.008, that will be your grams of hydrogen, divided by the total mass, which is that 58.08 grams. Round to four significant figures. We get 10.41% by weight is hydrogen. Now, if you're like me, you're, you're thinking, well, these need to add up to be 100%, 100 weight percent, 100% by weight. So this actually you could get by subtraction. But let's just go ahead and do it, kind of see it through this process. The mass of carb, excuse me, mass of oxygen would be 1 times 16.00 and divided by the total mass is that 58.08 grams. Again, round to four significant figures we get 27.55%. So 
So yeah, these weight percent problems, this is how this goes. This is the percent elemental composition, the percent of the element. Okay. So if you add all these together, you do get 100%. So this is one of those chemistry problems where you can actually check yourselves. But uh, just, you know, be careful. If you end up with, uh, let's see, if you end up with plus or minus 0.05%, that's fine. It's probably just in rounding. So I wouldn't get too freaked out about that. So you have an assignment slide. And um, you do need to, in all of your work, for the exams especially, and on homework, but exams especially, show all of your work. So make sure you communicate to me how you're working these percent elemental composition problems. They're kind of fun.